too. Good. Yeah, hopefully it's a quiet one. Yeah. Think about getting this TikTok. TikTok. Oh, it's got that Chinese spyware. You don't want to know that. Oh, uh oh, Flood HQ is calling. This is Agent Larry. Copy. Last known whereabouts. Ten four. Hold it, Agent Barry. No. We'll be on the hunt. That was Flood HQ. Apparently there's some Zoomers taking Hypebeast photos in an in-and-out parking lot for Instagram. Looks like mud. Let's do it. Defcon black van footprint. We're right on this guy's heels. I think he's shooting 556. Five, he must be trying to wound us. All right, Barry, you hold here. I'm gonna flank around right. We'll flush him out, okay? Barry, I need more covering fire! You know the rules. No more than one round per five seconds. God damn it! Move up! Stop collecting brass! Come on! You're not taking me alive, you fuds! Barry, last mag! Plastic on a gun? What are you playing with toys? Hey, are you gonna pick up that brass? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. You know why I carry a 10 millimeter? Why is that? Because they don't make an 11.4 millimeter. Hey, gentlemen, I know you're on the toy watching this. I know you're drinking your beer, eating your coffee, doing something like that where it's an intimate time. And if you upgraded me to eating food with you, I am honored, thank you. But don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I actually read your comments when I'm on the toilet. So it's like we're connected in the World Wide Web of toilet systems. So do me that solid. I like reading those comments, they're actually pretty good. 
Ladies and gentlemen, one of the sponsors of this video is going to be Air Gun Depot. Originally starting with the goal to provide air gunners a great resource to view and purchase a much broader selection of high-end air guns that were not available in brick-and-mortar sportsman stores. They have currently been providing exceptional customer service along with an expanding line of products. Air Gun Depot has grown to become one of the largest volume dealers for air guns, airsoft, paintball, blank guns, crossbows, and shooting accessories in the U.S. Go check them out. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, the Talking Shotgun Hunting Vest. Today we're going over a topic that I know a lot of you uh, are familiar with, and that is the topic of futtery. Now, futtery is something that exists within gun culture for a while now, but I think as time goes on, it's going the way of the dodo, as most things do, because, I mean, well, honestly, a lot of these guys that are fuds will start dying off here soon. And, you know, it's kind of sad because they're still gun owners, but there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of, well, how do you say, wrong info that they put out about guns and firearms. And, you know, one thing that I would like to see change is, of course, that shift in culture. And naturally, that generation is going to be kind of out of the spotlight, out of a lot of, uh, you know, culture, or because they're just going to kind of get so old they can't really do it anymore. And the younger generation, say millennials and Gen Xers, and well, I guess there could be some boomers and or fuds and Gen X. They're, they could technically be fuds in any crowd, but a lot of the younger guys seem to be more pushing modern concepts of firearms uh, for its true intention based on the Second Amendment. So that's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out, and even futtery in the future. But you saw him in the intro. It is Fire and Device Electrical M57. He's been a big friend of the channel for a bit. He is a proper dad, so the, the vibe of this all fits within his wheelhouse. But Clay, come on, get over here. Get on here. It's good to have you on here. We've been talking for uh, a bit for years now. Fun story is that you are literally an internet friend, right? This is probably the first time we've met in person. And yeah. I'm happy that you're not a blatant fed, unless you're lying. You know, I do joke in some of the group chats I am in that I like check all the boxes as the obvious fed in the group, except for my taste in firearms. True, okay. And yeah. because of that, you could pretty much rule it out. I was gonna say. If you saw me with some Springfield Saints and uh, I don't know, what is it, the Hellcat? The, yeah, th then you'd be like, th then he, he's a fed. Yeah, that, that gave me some fed vibes. Usually feds have weird taste in guns and they're like, hey guys, let's see those SBRs in the Discord server. That's how you know. That's how you know you're onto something. But it's good to have you on here, and I, I figured a fun episode will be kind of be talking about gun culture, the kind of gun culture we grew up in, right, that mm -hmm. we're a part of now, and that we may look to see in the future. Well, so the interesting thing is, you know, I'm 10 years older than you, nearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when I got big into guns, you know, FUD culture was still really strong. Yeah. Um, my first gun was a pump shotgun. Nice. The first rifle I bought was actually this. It looked very different then. Bolt action rifle, my local gun store. My first handgun was a 1911. Yeah. Because those are all all the information you found on the internet back then. Mm -hmm. That's where it pointed you to. Um, and you know you hear the same thing enough times, and you're like, you know what? I mean, it can't be that wrong. Yeah. But you know, I keep myself very open minded. I think people know that I'm definitely not a fud now, but. You know, there's some fun. Well, I think fun it's, aesthetics. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's that's you're, you're we're coming from that era, right? So my gun journey wouldn't be as experienced as yours because you just have more time on the earth than I do. Mm -hmm. But I'm not far behind you in the grand scheme of things. So it's kind of like I remember my older brothers, which are probably closer in age to you. I remember them being kind of like looking back compared to where we are now versus where they were. They were, I'd say, like young fuds. Like they had like the goofy cross draw, like cheap zip up vest. Yep. They had AR-15s with kind of like cheap red dots. I mean, granted they had ARs and, and some good stuff, but they weren't there yet. Seeing how things have progressed to this point with the advancements, and there's been some good steps forward, and I think there's been some miscalculations here and there within gun culture, but overall, it is very interesting to see how we have progressed in general amongst like the younger crowd that's very focused on like freedom, right? Yeah, yeah, there's some great things. You know, I think of one of the most important things is being open-minded, right? Because mm. I always joke sometimes about the, the Zoomer FUDs now, right. where you get the old guys say, all you need for home defense is a pump shotgun, and then now there's new guys, which is all you need for home defense is your, your 10-3 pistol braced AR <laughs> uh, with your red dot, and it's right. like, well, you know, like, they're both actually good, mm -hmm. but reality, everyone's home's different. Everyone's lifestyle's different. There's a lot of tools out there. Don't pigeonhole yourself. You're, right? you're, you're transitioning us into an interesting point of like the Zoomer FUD or like the Zoomer uh, lore, essentially. Like, 
you know, the micro chest rig wearing only needs three mags. Is it thinks his ballistics out of a 10-3 barrel is going to be sufficient out to range. He's very defiant of the government, yet he still always talks about, hey, is that a pistol brace? <laughs> it, it's and it's like I'm not trying to bag on these guys, but hey, I can just kind of see where if you're new to either crowd, you may have a closed off perspective to what could be out there. Yeah, yeah, like a shotgun may not be the best fighting tool, but in a certain apical situation, it's going to be useful, right? Now, an AR is also the same way, right? That you may want something bigger, you may want something smaller. These are all tools, and they're not like one job, you're done. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not a one and done. There's, there's multiple applications for these tools. And also, you know, even with the FUDs, a lot of those guys do know some things out there. Absolutely. Just because they say a lot of dumb stuff doesn't mean everything they say is dumb. Right. I mean, <laughs> you got to think, some of us young guys that are very into firearms, right? Where it's like, when you're so into firearms that all you kind of think about is guns, and like you, you suck at social interactions because, hey, this, this girl isn't talking to you about guns. She doesn't know, <laughs> she doesn't know I have an SR-15 at home. I'm like, yes, we do. It's all you talk about. <laughs> like that kind of thing. Right. But you kind of get so hyper focused but it's like these older guys that we would consider elmer fuds they have lived a lot more life they have a lot more experience on this earth are they stuck in some of their old guy ways sure right but they still have some useful knowledge and maybe they have some useful life experience they can give you don't negate them too quickly and it's also not too late to show them the ways i've heard plenty of stories of young guys taking out you know, say their dad or their grandpa throwing suppressors on their ars and those guys falling in love like right away I right. maybe I have been exposed to that stuff growing up and kind of just moved on and became actual adults and focused on real problems and raising families and not like running around in the flat range LARPing. Well, right. they didn't have the internet the way that we do now Absolutely, too. Yeah. So they, they learn this stuff from gun magazines, mm -hmm. 1911 forum. You don't know what you don't know and, and doesn't mean they're necessarily closed-minded. Some of them definitely are, but yeah. you know, some of them they just think that because it's what they've heard. Yeah, and you know, I heard it like some older guys, and they're not like crazy, like in their fifties. Like they grew up in the analog world, so their first instinct is to go to the library, or go open up books. Now their their first instinct isn't necessarily like, oh, I'm gonna open up Google. Real quick, let's go over the guns. Actually, we'll talk about these. Let's break down break down this bad boy for us. So this rifle, which is probably one of the most ri popular rifles I own, first rifle I ever bought. Everyone said, where did you get a left hand Remington 700? Well, the answer to that is in the past. So over a decade ago, I walked into my local gun store, 18, 19 years old, and I said, you got a left hand Remington 700? Yep, it's over here. Okay, I'll take that. Mm. Slap that $30 scope on top, fit those rings, and you know, I was a happy kid. When I came back from Afghanistan, I was like, you know, I need to spruce this thing up. I bought a BDL stock off of Gun Broker, uh, shipped it to Badger Ordnance. They milled it for the their detachable box magazine. I sent it to a gunsmith, stock fitted for the higher contour barrel and had it cut at 20 inches. The only upgrades I've really, and then slapped on, you know, far better scope, Trigicon, uh, AccuPoint. Do you have any plans to, it's not my business, do you have any plans to put a can on it or what? I, you know, I think about that a lot and I, I wonder if I should, Cut it down, direct thread, taper mount, uh, muzzle device. I can't decide on what I'm going to do for it, yes. but it's, I mean, it's probably going to happen. Yeah, tell me about the 1911. I want to hear about that. I got this one. This is another gun that I got right when I got back from Afghanistan. I got it from the Colton Custom Shop. Had them undercut trigger guard, serrate the front strap, and do the rosewood grips instead of the plastic ones. And then since then, I replaced the mainspring housing with a metal one, placed the safety, mag release, slide stop, and the sights. I think it's pretty done. Oh, and the trigger. So Clay came out. He brought he brought a, a bunch of fun guns as it is to show off your your, your friend's toys on, on the channel, right? So he let me run his SP5. This thing's actually pretty slick. He got the Aimpoint Nano. He's got the Mod Light PLHV2 with a single body battery in there, and then you got the tri -Lug. Ooh, I think it's not as hot as I thought it was gonna be. The tri -Lug adapters. I love tri -Lug adapters. Which can is this? Uh, that is the Omega 9K. Omega 9K. Very beautiful. Yeah, tri -lugs, it's, dude, the tri -lugs are so easy. They make, they make suppressors so much fun. So he's got the Knight's Armament tri rail down here. Uh, a lot of guys love that aesthetic of the Knight's Armament and MP5 look. And then, of course, the straight and clamped MP5 mags. Really hard to go wrong with that. It is a very sexy gun, and the guy has good taste in guns. Um, he posts a lot on Instagram, so if you're on Instagram, go check him out. I there will be a link for him down below. You know, I'll, I'll throw his ad up. You can go see him. Um, really good time. Now, this gun, of course, is blast to shoot, as all MP5s are. I don't want to waste your time there, but it essentially covers the gear and, of course, the uh, the 1911, right? The 1913. There's a video on this that should pop up. Let me see. I want to say over here. So that's essentially it for the gear. You know, if, if you don't have wood on your guns, it's not a real firearm. So you have to fix that. that covers so so that. is this a FUD gun? 
this technically is, of course, it's not a FUD gun. This is an incredibly based gun, but. I mean, it's old, old style firearm with wood furniture, FUD gun. You may be onto something. I just don't want to say it because it <laughs> hurts my heart to say that this, this, this will be considered a FUD gun. Yeah, no, that's fast radius. Well, gentlemen, hey, that essentially concludes the video. Something real fun, real thought piece, you know, a little thought tank on it about gun culture, where we're going in the future. Don't be a Zoomer FUD and don't be an old FUD. Expand your horizons. Constantly be learning and challenge yourself. That's a good life motto, and it works outside of the gun culture. So, Clay, thanks for coming on the channel, sir. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Can I have this? No. Dang it. Okay. Why well, try? Hey, if you want to support the channel in any way possible, merchandise is an excellent way to support the channel, as well as Patreon. Great way to support the channel. But as always, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you all on the flip. No, it's actually over here. Is it over there? It's over here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it should pop up, I think, over here. I should spend less money on these cries and more time on cardio. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Depending on the framing, we'll find out. Okay. Try to try to play some 4D YouTube chess. I like it. And then of course we have the, the hunting vest and my SMG mag caddy. Just because you know you gotta go proper fud. Yep. Fud. Get off my lawn.